Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read this problem, and press play, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, they want to know what is the solution to the system of equations y equals 3x minus 2 and y equals g of x, where g of x is defined by the function below. Okay, so they, they give us this linear equation, 3x minus 2, and we can, we can draw it here to get an estimate of what's happening. So let's do that real quick. All right, so negative 2, that is our y-intercept down here. And 3 is our slope, so we got 1, 2, 3, 1. So it's going to meet at 1, 1. I feel pretty confident about that. And then it's going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So what point is that? That's 2 and 4. I'm going to maybe label that. This is 2, 4. And then it's going to go up 3 again over 1. So it's going to go to 3, 7, right? Over 1 to 3, and then up 7. And then over, this is 3, 7. And then over 1, up 3. And I feel like, oh no, this is going to take me forever, right? Where is it going to hit again? So I'm just going to sketch that out. Mm, all right, so I feel like you can see that this parabola is going to cross the line somewhere up there, right? And so they're telling us right here Right, they want to know what is the solution to the system of equations below. So they're giving us all these points, right, where they cross. Interestingly enough, I noticed that the only possibility is choice four. We have a point one, one, which is clearly a solution here. Now let's just let's just step back for a moment, because it's not always gonna work out so nicely. Right? Let's make some let's make some inferences about how we can solve this in general, and then let's just make sure this answer is actually correct. Uh, I'm going to infer that the vertex of this parabola is at the point 2, 0. All right. I need two more points to get an equation for this parabola. I've got one right here. That's the point 0, 4. All right. And now here, I'm looking at the parabola, and, then, and I'm a little frustrated because every other point needs to be estimated, right? And here I'm going to say, okay, well, it looks like the point 3, 1 is a point. It also looks like the point 1, 1 is a point, right? 3, 1 and 1, 1. So we, we have to make some assumptions here that these points are correct. And I, I, I guess I can't think of a better way to explain why those points are going to work. Um, but the idea is now that we can come up with the equation for this parabola. What I would encourage you to do, and perhaps the most efficient way of doing this, is to enter these three points in your calculator, plug it in, and that will generate the equation for the parabola. You can also think of a translation, a transformation, of the parent function here, which is just y equals x squared. So if you had a parabola here, kind of the same parabola, drawn not the best by me and then shifted it to the right twice that would mean you'd have to do um, uh, you'd have to subtract 2 from the input so instead of just x squared it's minus 2 squared so this is a potential equation as well for g of x and we can try that out right now if I plug in g of 2 I should get 0 that's my output here and 2 minus 2 is 0 squared and I get 0 so I plugged in 2 I got 0 if I plug in 0, I know I should get 4. g of 0 is 0 minus 2 squared, so that's negative 2 squared, which is 4. So g of 0 is 4. That means if you plug in 0, you get 4. So this point checks out, and so does this one. If I plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. This formula also works nicely. It's a translation to the right. Remember, you subtract from the input to make the function move right. Of the parent function, let's call it f of x equals x squared. So you can look for a transformation, but but if the transformation is not working out nicely or or if it's some if it's if it's a parabola that's a little more bizarre, you need either a system of equations or a regression on a calculator to solve it. So let me show that really quick and then this might be overkill for this problem, but I want you to be ready for any problem they can throw at you. So let's do the system, let's do the calculator and we'll see how this works. So I'm going to do the system first. Now this, if you have three points, and you have ax squared plus bx plus c, this is our standard form of our equation, we know some things about this equation. We know if you plug in 0 for x, the output is 4. 
So if I have sum coefficient a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c, I know that the output is 4. I also know if you plug in 2, you get 0. So a times 2 squared plus b times 2, if x is 2, plus c, I get 0. And I know if I plug in 3, I get 1. So a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c equals 1. Now, I'm going to look at the first equation because zero, a times 0 squared is 0, b times 0 is 0, so c is 4. So now we know the c part of our equation, ax squared plus bx plus 4. And that means in these two spots right here, instead of just writing a c, I could write a 4. And now I have a system of equations with two variables that I can solve. The first equation is just, this is a times 4 essentially, so 4a plus 2b, and I'm going to subtract the 4 over here, equals negative 4. My second equation becomes 9a plus 3b, and I'm going to subtract the 4 over to get negative 3. I didn't have to subtract these 4s over, I just think it looks cleaner. Now when I have this set up, what am I going to cancel out? I'm going to cancel out my b's first. How am I going to do that? I multiply the first equation by 3, so I'll get 4a times 3 is 12a, 2b times 3 is 6b, and then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And if I multiply my second equation by 2, I get 18a plus 6b equals negative 6, and then look what happens. I've got two equal terms, so I could just subtract them out. That will cancel those two terms out, and I get negative 6a equals negative 12 minus negative 6 is negative 6. Same thing as negative 12 plus 6, and a is 1. So we've got a, and we can find b by plugging it back into any of these equations here. I feel like uh, I'll use this equation right here, and that tells me that 4 times 1 plus 2 times b equals negative 4. So 4 plus 2b equals negative 4. Subtract 4 on both sides, and 2b is negative 8. So b is negative 4. And we've got a, b, and c now, right? So we have 1 times x squared, ax squared, plus bx. So I'll just write 1x squared minus 4x plus c is 4 equals 0. And if we factor this, this is x minus 2 squared equals 0, which confirms or matches our transformation equation from before. And g of x equals x minus 2 squared. Now, the calculator can also do this whole process for us very quickly. Let's look at that, so you're ready for anything. And I have some old stuff on the calculator, so I'm just going to go to, um, actually, I'm not going to go to y equals, quit out. I'm going to go to the stat feature right here, press the stat button. Now I'm going to edit my list. I have some old list on there, I'm going to clear them out. Okay, I go up to the L1 and L2, I clear and enter. And then I enter my known points. If you remember, there was zero. And then two had a point, was input, and then three. And the outputs were four, zero, and one. Now I have three points. For a polynomial of degree n, you need n plus one point. So if it's x squared, or if it's a parabola, you need three points. If it's the cubic function, you need four points, so on and so forth. And if you press the stat button again and go to calc, there's all these regs, which are regressions. And the calculator will approximate linear or quadratic, cubic or quartic functions. I'll go to the quadratic, which is number five. And it already has my list one as my x, my list two is my y, which is what I want. Frequency list. I don't know if that applies here. I'm going to clear that, though. I'm not measuring frequencies. And then hit calculate. And then there it is. Uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is one, b is negative four, and c is four. So why, why do we do all this stuff, right? Why do we get a system with this equation? And uh, why do we do that regression? Because we can use that then to solve when the line meets the quadratic. So if it's not, in, not a friendly problem, this is friendly because the numbers work nicely and the only choice that seemed to match up was choice four. But suppose it wasn't, right? Well, then what you do is you would say, well, I have this equation for my line, and I have this equation for my quadratic. I want to know when they're equal to each other. I could graph them on my calculator to find the intersect, 
or I can try to solve them algebraically, right? I'll show you the algebraic part and the graphing calculator part because why not? This video is already long enough, so I might as well um, show you everything I can. So here we subtract 3x and add 2. So we get 0 equals x squared minus 7x, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. And then we, that factors x minus 1 and x minus 6. So these two things, the, the line in the parabola are equal when x is 1 and x is 6, right? And we can plug in 1 and 6 to either equation. I'll plug it in here. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 squared, so 1, 1 is the point. And then I think plug in 6. 6 minus 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So that's the algebraic process, which matches our solution here. But also on the calculator, if we go to y equals, we have our equation for our line, x minus 2, close parentheses, squared. And then, what was that, 3x minus 2, 3x minus 2. And I press zoom 6 to get a standard window to see when they're going to meet. There's my parabola. Oh, there's the line. They intersect off the window, so you can't do the intersection unless you have the appropriate fit. So you can go to zoom fit, but I like pressing window because so I can customize the y min and y max. I'm going to go to y max, say 25. I, mean, I know it's 16, but assume we don't know that, right? There's my parabola. There's the line. I hit second trace. Choice five is for intersect. And I'm hovering right now here on the parabola. They're calling it my first curve. Hit enter. Then I jump to the line. I hit enter again. Kind of scroll near the intersection point. It wants me to guess. Hit enter. There's my first intersection. Then I repeat the process. Second trace, intersect. This time I'm going to go near the intersection point I want to find. Pretty close there, I think. Okay. Oh, and this calculator program froze. Oh boy. Well, if I hit enter, it would jump to the line, and then I would scroll to the point, enter again, and I would see the next point, which is 616. All right, so I said a lot in this video, but I, I want to make sure you're ready for any kind of parabola that they could throw at you. Thanks.